Hey guys, I wanted to hop on and kind of make a video sharing all the things that I've learned for hostess coaching over the past four years that I've been with Usborn. Um, I feel like that was the hardest thing for me to learn when I was getting started. And so um, I was thinking that it might help some of you that are new or maybe you've been struggling for a while to kind of get to your parties to where you're hoping they would be or average. Um, and so I thought I would kind of get on here and give you some of the tips and things that I've learned from like the very first interaction from somebody interested in having a party and how I kind of coach them through everything. So basically, when you have somebody interested, whether it be from a party survey or maybe you have somebody saying that they're interested in hosting from the host post, um, or maybe just somebody that was super active in the party, um, a lover or an addict, um, a friend or a family member, and you decided to ask them if they'd like to host a party and they said yes. So um, basically when you have somebody interested, I like to take it to a private message. Um, and then from there, you know, just tell them how excited you are to ha help them host a party and um, how you love your so excited to help them earn a ton of free books for their family. Um, and then from there, from the first interaction, you want to set that date right away, either during the night of the party or the next day or as soon as possible when their excitement's the most high. You want to keep it super simple. You don't want to leave it open-ended and kind of shoot dates back and forth and try to pick out the right thing. What you want to do is you want to keep it simple. You want to offer your first two available dates. You want to try and schedule the next party as close to your current party as possible within, you know, a week if possible, um, even a week and a half, but not more than that. Whenever possible, try to get it booked ASAP. Occasionally, you're gonna have people that have circumstances that are out of your control, and it might be later down the road, but that's um, okay. Just try to get that date set, even if it's later, um, and try to get it tacked down um, so you can get started. So once you set, once you give them your first two available dates, most of the time they're gonna pick a date that you give them. Occasionally it won't work. If either of those dates won't work, offer them two new dates. Um, try to pick a party night, or two nights, whichever days you want to party on. Try to keep it consistent every every uh, from week to week for every month. Um, if you can do that, it's going to help you to develop a routine. Um, it's going to help you not feel like you're partying every night of the week. And whenever possible, try to double book. You could triple or even quadruple book. Sometimes I'll book, you know, two at seven o'clock and two at eight o'clock, two at seven thirty, two at eight thirty. Um, I typically book parties Sunday through uh, Thursday are best. Weekends are not great because people are out um, running errands or doing stuff around the house. Maybe they have birthday parties or weddings, baby showers. You know, that's just time for people to be with their friends and their family. So. Sunday through Thursday are best. I typically pick a time in the evening that um, is going to hopefully kind of them being wound down and done with dinner and home from work. So seven to like eight, eight thirty is like the best timing for that. Um, so once you have your date um, picked, you want to offer two times to choose from. Um, once they pick a time, I always grab their contact information, their phone number, email, mailing address. That way you have all of their contact information. I just let them know it's for a party set up and it won't be shared. Um, and then um, once you get that contact information, um, mention the tax and shipping. We don't want any surprises later that they get upset about. So I always have a message saved to um, my phone and just in my notes and I copy and paste that message to everybody. I can share that in the comments. Um, and so I always mention the tax and shipping and that's kind of my system. Date, time, contact information, tax and shipping. And then if you don't know them, start to get to know them. Ask them about themselves. Ask them about their family. Try to build that connection. Um, you know, uh, request that, that, that you can be Facebook friends ahead of time. That way it helps you when you go to try and add them as co-host to the event. You're always, you're already connected and it's super easy to get them added to the party. Um, so after you kind of build that rapport, you're going to um, tell them about yourself too and your family and your hobbies and different things like that. And then you're going to give them that inviting message to get started. So in, um, in our team page, there is, um, 
some documents that will help you with hostess coaching and you can search hostess coaching and those will pop up. There's one that I've kind of um, developed my own wording throughout the four years. And there's also a really great document that you can use um, developed by our directors. So there's like kind of a hostess coaching timeline that can help you step by step with all of that. Um, so I give them that inviting message. I um, edit that message and I make sure that I put the day of the week, the date, the time, and the time zone into that message before I send it to my hostess. So um, I sent her that message just as a message all by itself. All she's got to do in that messenger chat, copy and paste to her friends. So just you want to keep it as simple as possible. I typically like to send a voice message with that inviting message, just kind of explaining how everything will work, um, explaining that we don't want to mass invite. I'll give you kind of the wording that I use on that. Um, but I feel like sometimes they tend to get overwhelmed. And so if you can say all of the instructions in one or two voice messages, they don't read paragraphs of stuff and they don't get overwhelmed. So that's why I typically get my hostess started with a voice message. So I say, hey, here's the, I'm so excited to party. Here's the inviting message. So you can get started with messaging your friends. Um, Basically, the most important thing is that we don't mass invite to this party. What we're gonna do is um, you're gonna copy and paste that message. You're gonna go through all of your contacts in Facebook, A through Z, and just message everybody you could possibly think about who have kids in their lives, whether it be a mom, grandma, auntie, teacher, grandpa, whoever. Copy or try really hard not to prejudge. Don't think into it. If they have kids in their lives, you're going to send that message in a personal message to each person. So copy this message, paste, add their name and send and Don't think twice about it before you send it. I promise if you can do this, it's going to go super fast. Be sure to keep a list of all those people that reply yes as they kind of comment back to you. So you don't have to go filter through all of those messages and it just makes it super easy to add them to the party. Um, we want to shoot for 25 to 30 or more yeses. More is always best. Um, and that will be a really great party for you. So um, I'm going to let you get started and then I will check back in in a couple days and see how things are going. Um, so keep that list of 25 or 30 or more and let me know when you have that and I will get you added to the Facebook event that I create for your party. So I let her know that because I've had a few hostesses that <laughs> create their own Facebook event. I don't want them to spend extra time doing that because I kind of want it set up the way that I want to create it. Um, and so I let her know that I'm going to check back in in a couple days to see how things are going. That gives her a heads up. You need to get started, you know, because I'm going to be checking back in. So I give her a couple days, a day or two, depending on how close you are to her party. Um, and then I check back in. Hey, I just wanted to check back in, see how things are going. Um, how many yeses do you have so far? And I ask that direct question. I don't say, how's it going? That's an open-ended question. So I want a direct answer. How many yeses do you have so far? And then that gives me an idea of where she's at. She could say, oh, I have my 25, or I'm at 30 or 40 or whatever. She could be a rock star. Or maybe she's struggling. Maybe she's at 10 or 5, 15, whatever the lower number is. I give her some ideas to get even more. So, hey, that's great. That's a great start. Here's a few ideas that will help you get even more. One, you can post on your um, personal Facebook wall, letting everybody know how excited you are for your book party. Um, mention the date and time and ask if anybody would like to join you to comment below in the comments. The second thing you can do is you can go back through your Facebook friends one more time or go from the bottom up. Facebook can be super weird sometimes. Sometimes when you go into those contacts, each time you go in, it's in a different order. You might find people you didn't see the first time around. You can send a few more messages. And then the third thing that you can do is send this quick follow-up message to anyone who has read but didn't respond yet to your message. And this will really help you get a lot more yeses. I do that, this for all of my personal parties. So then after I kind of do that, that those three ideas is usually in a voice message again. And then, um, after I kind of sent her that voice message with those three ideas, I copy and paste that little follow-up message. And the follow-up message is something like, hey, I'm just trying to get the invites sent out for my Usborne book party on Facebook. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, there'll be a prize giveaway. Would you like to join me? Question mark. And so, and then I send them this cute little nibbles graphic. And it's just like holding a sign like, hey, are you joining us? Or are you coming? You can even have your hostess like take a selfie with a sign like, 
you want to party with me? Are you coming? Um, and she can send that with a message. And so I think by having a graphic in that messenger chat it makes them stop and they read and there's a question at the end or uh, yeah, a question at the end of the message and that will prompt them to get some more answers. Sometimes people are just busy. Sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes their kid opens their phone or maybe they bump their phone and the message open and they didn't realize and it showed that they read it, but they really didn't read it. So sending that quick follow-up message will really help you get a lot more answers um, as far as yes or no to the party. If there's some maybes, you can encourage your hostess, hey, if there's any maybes, um, ask them if they mind you um, sending them an invite and they can check it out if they have some time. So sometimes you can get some maybes in there and, and maybe they'll see a post and they'll fall in love with the book. So, um, make, sure, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, another thing that you can do to kind of keep your hostess super invested and excited for the party is you can ask her to make a wish list. Give her a dollar amount, say, hey, um, will you make up a wish list of $200 or $300 in books that you would really like to earn from this party and then send me the wish list. Um, and sometimes you can incentivize her with specific books from that wish list. Um, maybe set an RSVP, well, hey, when we get 30 RSVPs, I'll give you an additional uh, muddle and match or whatever book you choose from her wish list. Um, when we recycle, hey, when you get help for each hostess that you help me get, I'll give you another $10 in free books or I'll give you this book. Hey, if you help me get a recruit, I can give you this. Um, and so incentivizing, incentivizing her with a book amount or even specific books off her wish list will sometimes help push her to um, work a little bit harder for your party. Um, and then in the meantime, while you're waiting for her to kind of um, start working on those messages, um, I would definitely get started on setting up the party, setting up her party link, um, adding your sponsor and team leader to that party so they can kind of shadow if you're still new. Um, and then I wait to add my hostess to the party until she kind of gets to that 25 or 30 range. Um, after I've given her all those ideas and we try to get her as close as possible. Um, once I have the party all set up. I like to have it all set up and I like to have the intro post, the how to reader post, and maybe an RSVP reminder pre-party post in that event before I add my co-host. I wanna make sure once I add my co-host, she's gonna start adding her guest. And so I wanna make sure that there's something for those guests to look at once they get added and so they can interact and participate. Um, as soon as I my hostess is kind of at that number and I go to add her as co-host, um, I give her a reminder right before before I add her. Hey, I'm going to add you to the Facebook event so you can add um, your friends that replied yes to your personal message. Be sure to only add those people that responded yes. Um, a lot of times people are tempted to mass invite because either they can't get to that number or um, a lot of different companies do it differently and just let people mass invite a hundred of their friends. But we've found that we have more successful parties when people are first asked and agree to be invited. And so I just remind her and promise her that she's gonna have a really amazing party if we can just make sure that everybody that wants to be there is there because they chose to be. Um, so then I add her to the Facebook event and then I also ask her, I say, hey, um, you're added to the Facebook event. Um, I just wanted to um, ask you to comment on all the pre-party posts, including the How's Your Reader post, because that will really get the ball rolling to um, get your friends excited and see you participating, um, as well as kind of getting the ball rolling for starting to make those recommendations for you and for all of your guests. And when I post, you know, when you post those um, suggestions for the hostess, their guests are gonna see it and they're gonna start commenting as well. So that kind of gets the ball rolling. As people start to RSVP, um, I will usually tag as many as I can that have RSVP to the graphic of the How Your Reader post and that will kind of give them that notification and they'll start commenting as well for more activity. And then as you start posting those suggestions, other people are gonna see them and they're gonna want some as well. So that kind of gets the excitement building up. I typically, typically post about one to two pre-party posts a day leading up to the party. I try to get my hostess added at least three to four days before the party. I wanna make sure that I have enough time to start getting those suggestions going, to start building that excitement, and to get it, you know, get that party rolling right. Um, 
just really um, be very grateful for them posting. You know, they don't have to do this for us, but it, we're super grateful that they're hosting. It gives us an opportunity to get some sales. It gives us opportunity to find more hostesses and even possible recruits. So they're doing us a favor and just be really always grateful for that and tell them how excited you are to help them earn a ton of free bucks. Um, and then there's some hostess coaching, like I said in that document, um, that we send. I personally send a message um, if I'm like maybe three or four days, actually the day before the party or a couple days before the party, I have my hostess send a reminder to RSVP to anybody who has not RSVP'd yet. Um, it's really easy to copy and paste that message individually, not with part of another message to her about sending that message. You wanna send it by itself so she can just copy and paste that message. So I copy and paste that message to her and then I go to Facebook, there's a circle with three dots and you usually can copy the Facebook a link to add to that message or if you um, have, if you're in that event on Facebook, you can copy the search bar and paste that in and that'll give the um, event link. So I send the message to RSVP reminder with the event link so it's super easy for people to find. They just have to click it once and they're in the event and then they can click going. Um, so the reminder to RSVP is either the day before or two days before, and then you're going to have her send a, um, let me back up, RCP reminder. I send it to her, I type her little message, hey, here's the, um, here's a quick message I need you to send um, this morning. Um, it's just a quick reminder to <clears throat> send to all your friends to remind them to RSVP. Um, a lot of people, if they're not RSVP, they won't see the notifications and the posts in Facebook. So this message is super important. So I stress that to her. Um, if we can get her friends to RSVP, then most likely they're gonna see the post and they're gonna join us for the live party. And then she's gonna send the day of message. So I message her the next day in the morning. Hey, party tonight, I'm so excited. I, You've done such a great job. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and getting all your friends excited. Um, it's gonna be a really great party. Here's a quick message to send this morning. Um, just reminding your friends that the party's tonight. People are super busy and they need this extra reminder so it doesn't slip out of their mind and they miss the party. Um, and so get her started with that and then, um, I always check in, that's what I didn't say with the RSVP reminder, but every message I send the day before, day of, day after, whichever one I have her send, I always let her know, hey, here's a message to send, I'll check in tonight and see how that's going. So I let her know that I'll be checking back in later, so she expects it and hopefully she sends that message out. Um, so I have her send, you know, the day of message, ask her to send it out that morning. And then in the evening, I check back in, hey, so-and-so, I just wanted to check back in, see how those um, day of messages went. Were you able to send them? I always check in early evening. That way, if they didn't send it, there's still time to make sure that they send that message. And then like 20, 30 minutes before the party, I send them the 15 minute reminder. I again, attach the party link to that so they have easy one-click access into the party. And then, um, I say, hey, this message is so important. You've worked so hard to get your party going. I wanna make sure that you have a really successful party. The goal is to get everybody there on time. The more people that we can get there on time, the more likely they will be to stay for the party and order, and you're gonna have a really amazing party and get tons of free books. So be sure to send this message out 15 minutes before the party. Um, and then the other important thing that I need you to do as people start joining us in the welcome post, be sure to welcome each of them individually at, and reply to their comments. Um, the other important thing for you to do is to comment on every post, um, showing your excitement, um, even reply and mingle with your friends as if you were in their home with them. Um, this is really gonna help get the ball rolling for them to do the same and it's gonna get them super excited and they're gonna have a great time. And then after the party, um, I just make sure that I thank her so much again for all of her hard work. Um, you could either send her the, the message for the next day, the day after message that night, copy and paste that message, ask her to send it out in the morning, um, or you can send it in the morning and then just let her know, hey, I'll check back in tomorrow night and see how things are going. And so I check back in, make sure she sent that message, keep her accountable. Um, me as a hostess during the party, 
I make sure that I too welcome each guest as they join. Um, I make sure that I try to reply to pretty much every single comment whenever it feels natural and where I can kind of interject or um, show a picture of a book or maybe steal a YouTube video to show that book or maybe upsell it with a different book that's similar. Um, the more involved I am, the more exciting the party's gonna be. Um, I try to go live at least the day before or even you know right after the welcome post when we get the party started. Um, and typically I kind of have a pre-video that I post sometime pre-party, just explaining how the party works that you know, we'll be posting a welcome post right at the start of the party, that there'll be a new post going out about every five to, about every five minutes, um, showing a different range of some of the books that we have to offer. And then at the end of the party, there'll be the shopping post with link to the Esborn website. I typically go over customer specials, um, flat rate shipping of $6, and sometimes I show a book or two, but that's totally up to you. Um, and I just have a pre-recorded video that I use for every party, and then my live is different every time. So um, there are some really great um, videos about going live in the weekly consultant training and tons of other hostess coaching tips and different videos to help you with all different topics. Um, and then, and then when I, um, when the party's kind of, wrapping up. Oh, one thing that I always do is, um, so I typically run the party one day till the following night at midnight. Um, and then after that, the next morning, so the third day, I'll typically extend the party another couple days. We want to kind of make a deadline so people don't procrastinate, forget to order. Um, it just kind of creates a sense of urgency. And then we extend for anybody that were too busy or procrastinated and forgot to order. So giving them a couple extra days sometimes helps round up those orders. Typically, it doesn't work to extend it a week or more because the further you get away from the party, the more the excitement wears off and people just get busy and forget to order and they won't order. So after, you know, two or three days, Whoever has an order probably won't order. Um, but the fortune really is in the follow-up. So making sure she sends that message the day after. Um, and it just lets them know that there's time to go back and view the post. It has an easy access to the shopping link. You can even attach the event link also to that message. So they have access to the event. They have access to the shopping. But pretty much we've probably already sent that event link in the 15 minute reminder or the RSVP. So I normally just attach the shopping link to that. Um, but the fortune really is in the follow-up. I've had some parties where the hostess didn't show up till the very end or at all. Um, or maybe none of the guests showed up, but my hostess really did send those follow-up messages and I had $600 or even a thousand dollar party from it. So fortune really is in the follow-up. So really stressing the importance of that message um, and telling them, you know, it just makes it easy for them to click once and be at the shopping site. Um, you can also kind of check in with as many people as possible. See if they need any recommendations, if you can help with anything. Um, the suggestions are super important because that's a way to open up like, um, like a connection to people that you aren't Facebook friends and messenger. And that's a way for you to check in, see, you know, if they need any help or want any recommendations or want to see videos of um, the insides of any of these books. So kind of building that connection is super important to finding future hostesses and people to join your team. Um, and then when I, when it's time for the prize winner, you can either announce, if you feel like most of the people are there night of, you can announce your prizes night of. If you want, you can announce it the next day. Sometimes I wait till all of the orders come in. So there's lots of different ways of announcing a prize winner. Um, I typically keep a party log for each party. Um, I go and write, I just have a spiral notebook. I think this is it. This is nothing fancy. You could be fancy and have an Excel spreadsheet or whatever you want. Um, I find a party that I kind of did a good job on keeping along. So this is Alex party. Alex party hit, um, I don't know if I wrote the total sales. I think her party was $1,100. <laughs> So pretty amazing. Um, and so what I do is I write, you know, my hostess in the day the party is and what I offered her $30 additional and free for hosting. Um, I go down to the very first post, the intro post and work my way up to the shopping post. And I write every person's name that ever commented on any of the posts. 
They get a tally mark for each time they participated. I put a star if they showed up on time for the welcome post. Um, if they commented, I'd like to ask, you know, in the Howl Your Reader post or the welcome post, if they're a, a, a newbie, lover, or addict, and I typically write that down. If you have people that are lovers or addicts, those are definitely great people to reach out to about hosting or about joining your team. Um, if I did suggestions, I put an S with a circle around it. Um, if they ordered, I write down if they ordered. Um, typically everybody I give suggestions to, those are pretty much people that I can bank on getting an order from. So if I have an S here and I don't have an order, I definitely want to reach out or have the hostess reach out. Um, I write little notes about their kids. If I can get their kids or grandkids names, I'll write that down and their ages. That helps me when I message them. I use their name and I use their kids name so it's more personalized message better connection that way. Um, I write down um, if I have hostesses or people interested in hosting or joining, um, and then I write down the prizes that I'm offering and who won those prizes. So then that just kind of helps me to keep things organized. It helps me to evaluate my parties and see what I can do better. Um, if you can do that night of or the next day when it's fresh, you can see what can I do to make this a better party. Can I ask my hostess if she can check in with Brenda, Justine, and Amy to see if they want any suggestions? Um, if I had suggestions, I'm usually probably already have a messenger chat open so I can see if they want any, any videos of the books that on their wish list. Can I give them any other suggestions? Do they need help ordering? Did they find anything that they would like to get for, the, for John or Sally? Um, so it just kind of helps you to kind of see what you can do to maximize each party. Um, I said I was going in hostess coaching, now I'm in party tips, but I just kind of want to share <clears throat> my process with everything. So I have that party log. Typically the people that commented the most and were most active in the party, the person who has the most points, excuse me, is typically the person that I offer the prizes to. Why? Because they're most excited about the books and they're most likely the people that I can get to host and even join my team. Um, you could just randomly draw a name from a hat and that would work perfectly fine or use an app that kind of does a raffle thing for you. That's fine too, but I like to be strategic with my prizes um, and that really helps. And I'll put in the comments the um, message for the prize upgrade. Um, so when I offer that prize, I just let them know they're the winners. I put a winner graphic and I say, hey, message me about your prize. So I tag their name at Sarah Jones, message me about your prize. Um, and so she'll message me, that'll open up another chat where we can have some communication if we're not already connected. And then I send her that copy and paste that um, winner message. And it just talks about, you know, hey, I can offer you 10% off your order. Or if you want to host, I can offer Offering you additional thirty dollars in free books for hosting, um, or if you want to do both, I can do both. Thirty dollars sounds like a lot, but anytime your hostess hits a hundred dollars or more, remember that Usborne gives you that fifty dollar book credit at sixty five percent off. So if you're offering thirty, you're really once the party hits a hundred dollars, you're only really paying like about nine fifty for that. So nine fifty is definitely an investment that I'm worth giving to have a party that might make me a hundred or two hundred or even more than that. So definitely worth the investment. And for some reason, that $30 number is the tipping point. Sometimes I've offered 20 or 25. Um, but when I offer that th additional $30, I really make sure that they know it's an additional $30 on top of the ho normal hostess rewards that you can earn from Usborne. And I could even send her the hostess charge for July or August or whatever month it is. Um, so she can see what she could earn from that month plus an additional $30 in free books from me. <clears throat> and then um, when I have my hostess ready, like we feel like all the orders are in um, and nothing else is gonna come through and we reach out to everybody we possibly can reach out to, I um, ask her, hey, okay, your party hit this amount. Here's the hostess rewards chart. This is what you've earned. Um, go through and put your um, list together. Um, can you just put them in a shopping cart, send me a screenshot, make sure to include the picture of each book and the numbers to the left of the book. That'll just make it super easy for me to enter it um, when it's time to close the party. If, let me back up, if you have her party, maybe she's at the extra 
either double rewards or monthly rewards, whatever. Um, if you're outside your eight weeks, it's the monthly rewards chart. But if she's made it to a level to make those extra rewards, but she doesn't have a hostess, don't close the party till you get the hostess, okay? Um, and so you can try for that with the prize upgrade. You can even ask her, hey, who do you think is most likely to host? Have her work for it, have her message her friends, or um, if you're in connections, then you can kind of message those friends. Um, but try and encourage her to help you get that hostess. Um, during the party too, um, if she doesn't jump into that hostess coaching post and say how fun it was and easy and how amazing you are, message her during the live party right at that post and say, hey, would you mind jumping on to that hostess coach? post and just tell everybody how easy and fun it was or even just type up the message for her and say copy and paste this into the hostess post um, because it's kind of like when your friends suggest a product or maybe um, a, a store that they really love you're typically going to go check that out right when you when they suggest some or recommend something to you so same thing with hosting you want your hostess to kind of jump into that host post say how easy and fun it was and if her friends are seeing that they're going to trust her and they're going to want to jump on board and host a party um and so once she kind of has her list together with all the books that she wants, then she's gonna send you a screenshot of that and we're gonna enter into Order Pro and um, get it closed out super easy and fast. So I hope that helps. I know it was a lot of information, um, but I feel like that was like the hardest thing for me to learn in the beginning. When I started out, my parties were not so great. Um, and I, I just couldn't understand why I couldn't um, hit the average party levels of 350 or more um and so i really did everything i do, could do to go to any training and absorb anything that i could so these are the tips that i kind of hopefully I hopefully i stated everything but these are kind of the process and the tips that i've learned um, in my four years as a consultant and hopefully that helps you guys um, let me know if you have any questions um, again you can search this team page for hostess coaching and there is kind of the word document that I put together with my messages and then there's the hostess coaching timeline that's going to give you kind of step by step of what days to send what so be sure to check both of those out um, and let me know if you have any questions so keep working hard you guys are doing amazing um, and I hope you guys have a great week bye guys